Good evening and welcome to the City of Pasco Council meeting tonight. The city thanks you for being a part of our city of your city government. At meetings, the city takes formal actions. <coughs> excuse me, on items, holds public hearings, and conducts other city business. Agenda packets are available on the City of Pasco's website at www.pasco-wa.gov slash agenda. For those in person, the small table immediately to the right as you enter the room. This meeting is also being televised live on PSC TV channel 191, on Spectrum Cable in Pasco and Richland, and is streamed on the city's Facebook page, website, YouTube channel, and GoToWebinar. <clears throat> this and previous council meeting video is available on the city's website. The public may submit their comments or ask questions by contacting the city manager, city clerk, or by using the Ask Pasco app. <coughs> Lastly, we would like to announce the presence of our Spanish interpreter to my left back corner near the exit door, Mr. Cruz. Uh, he's here to assist anyone requiring in, uh, interpretation services. Uh, Mr. Cruz, do you mind making yourself known? And if anyone needs the, um, the interpreter uh, assistance, please let Mr. Cruz know. So with that, um, let's get a roll call. Council members Barajas. Present. Blaisdell. Here. Grimm. He messaged me stating he's trying to get on. Um, I don't, you know, he's probably using Microsoft Teams um, instead of GoToWebinar. And that may be one of our critical junctures. Uh, that said, I, I honestly don't know. Let me see if he's giving me any further follow-up. Um, he just said he's trying to. That's that's what I got. So he may join us in, at some point. Okay. Great. Council Member Harpster. I believe he's remote as well. We, we did hear from him earlier, so I'll go on. Uh, Council Member Corrales. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Milne. I'm here. And Mayor Serrano. I am present as well. Do we want to try Harpster once more? Councilmember Harpster? Okay. Well, uh, we note that his presence. I can see it, and we'll figure it out from here. If you'd all please arise and uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Thank you all. Uh, with that, we will move into item number four, which is the consent agenda. All items listed under the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted <coughs> by a roll call vote as one motion as listed below. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If further discussion is desired by council members, the item may be removed from the consent, consent agenda to the regular agenda and considered separately. <coughs> so with that, the first item is item A, Approval of meeting minutes for March 18th and March 25th, 2024. Item B, bills and communications, approving claims in the total amount of $10,050,951.86. Item C, resolution number 4438, amendment to the 2024-2025 City Council representation on local and regional boards and committees. Item D, Resolution number 4439, service agreement with Tridec. And item E is visit Tri-Cities Tourism Promotion Area Reserve Fund request. Do we have any discussion on those items? Seeing none, can I get a motion? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the consent agenda as read. I second. All right. All right, uh, roll call uh, Council Member Barajas. Yes. Council Member Blaisdell. Yes. Council Member Grimm. We won't work here. Council Member Harpster. Mayor, he said that he can hear us. And he's trying to talk, and I'm working with uh, Mr. Funfar to try and sort it out. Okay. I'll go on with the roll call, and then we can come yeah, back. Yeah, we'll circle him. back. Thank okay. you. 
Uh, Council Member Perales? Yes. Council Member Milne? I mean, yes. Mayor Pro Tem, sorry. <laughs> and Mayor Serrano? Yes. Okay, we'll just be waiting for Mr. Harvester. Any luck, Mr. Harpster? Let's do this. You all keep working this. Uh, at a minimum, we're on a 5-0, so a majority has passed this action. Let's circle back uh, if when when we do get either Mr. Harps or Mr. Grimm, who said he's attempting to commit, uh, connect. So with that, it looks like it passes uh, unanimously at five to zero. We'll modify that accordingly if Mr. Harps chimes in otherwise. <clears throat> we'll move on to item number five, proclamations and acknowledgements. There are none listed. And that leads us to number six, public comments. <clears throat> the public may address council on any item unless it relates to a scheduled public hearing. This item is provided to allow the opportunity to bring items to the attention of the city council or to express an opinion on an issue. Its purpose is not to provide a venue for debate or the posing of questions with the expectation of an immediate response. Some questions require consideration by council over time and after a deliberative process with input from a number of different sources. Uh, some questions are best directed to staff members who have access to specific information. Citizen comments will be normally limited to three minutes each by myself, the mayor. Those with lengthy messages are invited to summarize their comments or submit them in written information for consideration by council outside of a formal meeting. Lastly, when called upon, please state your name and your city or county of residency into the microphone before providing your comments. And two additional things, we do have a timer here You'll notice it'll start green, yellow, then red, just like a traditional stop sign. It's three minutes. Um, and, and one thing I would like to ask is direct your comments to the council as a body, not to a specific individual. With that, uh, do we have any public comments for tonight? In the front. Oh, I got water. Oh, just a tight one second. Mr. Harps, was that you? Yeah. It, was that him or was that someone that said yeah from elsewhere? That was, I, I, logged, I logged in on my phone. Okay. Um, so I don't know if you followed. We had a roll call vote uh, or not a roll call vote. Yep. Or, I was. Go ahead. I was following the whole time. Yes, I'm present and yes on the consent agenda. Okay. That moves it to six to, none, to, six to zero. Uh, we are now in the public comment section. I know you've been following, so we'll. Uh, Got a gentleman at the stand. Please press down on the mic. There you go. Thank you very much, Mayor. Good evening, Council. My name is Pat Jones. I live in the city of Pasco. I'm here tonight to uh, just share a concern I have. As a former city council member myself, I always knew that if I didn't know something was wrong, I couldn't fix it. So I'm here to share just a concern I have as a new resident of the community. I love to golf, and I've enjoyed looking at the Tri-Cities Golf Magazine here, the Visit Tri-Cities Golf, and it talks all about the great golf in the Tri-Cities. And there's a lot of great golf. There's a lot of great golf in Pasco. But I had an experience the other day at one of the Pasco City courses that I need to share with you because it needs to really be fixed and not happen again. On Thursday, March 14th, I had an afternoon tea time reserved. I took the afternoon off from work and was going to go golf and looking forward to a great day. I got out there, paid my fees, got my cart, uh, went over to the area. Oh, this is at the, I'm sorry, the Sun Valley course. Sun Willows. Make sure that's the right one. Sun Willows, sir. Pardon? Sun Willows, presumably. Sun Willows, yes, thank you, sir. Sun Willows course. And uh, was going over to the practice area to hit a few balls first. And uh, a gentleman approached me and asked me what I was doing here. I said, well, I'm going to, I have a tea time, I'm going to play. And he said, well, no, we're not letting anyone on the course today. Only the gang sums are playing today. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, the gang sums golf here every morning. We're all members, and we decide who gets on the course or who doesn't. And I thought, well, that's wrong. This is a municipal golf course. I had a tee time. I paid my money. I should be able to play. And he said, no, you can't play. The gang sums decide who plays, and that's it. And as he's talking to me, two other guys are kind of stepping up on me, you know, trying to surround me. 
And I thought that was odd, A, because I'm a big man, and not often does that happen. But I also use a walker, and uh, I thought, who are these guys stepping up on a guy using a walker at the golf course? Come on, let's get real here. So anyway, I had to go in, get a refund, and um, I left the course. And I thought, this is a very distressing thing, and I, I can't see where a, a city like I believe Pasco to be in my, my short time here, my wife and I have been here a little over eight months, would you know, condone that kind of thing. If that course is a public course, then it needs to be a public course and tea times need to be honored. If it's going to be run by these gangsums and be a private course, then fine. But it shouldn't be advertised as a public course and they shouldn't take tea times. So that's a situation that I believe needs to be addressed. I called the city's recreation department, uh, talked to a lady there who was very, very helpful. Uh, she listened to me. She said, I can't do much for you, but I'll gladly listen to your concern and share it with someone. So I'm, I'm confident that she did. I hope she did. And so I hope this can be looked into because if public funds are going into running a golf course that is quasi-private for these gangsums, that's a problem. And I'm sure no one here you know, would want that to happen. And this is probably the first time you're hearing about it. So that's why I'm here to share it. We're very happy to be in Pasco. And thank you for all you're doing and look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Do we have any uh, anyone else from public desiring to make? I see a hand up in front. I can't see where it's coming from. Can you, can you turn the mic on? Uh, it's the gray button at the bottom of the mic stand. It, the circle. Oh, that. And then just pull this down a little bit. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Okay. I'm Mary Mahoney. I reside in the floodplain, 5017 West Pearl, Pasco. Regarding the floodplain, the city of Pasco and Hayden Homes are responsible for the disappearance and or deaths of seven American bald eagles within the floodplain. Without a permit, this violates the Bald and Golden Eagle Protection Act and more. I've documented our eagles with approximately 500 photos. Rick White, former Pasco City Planning Director, stated the trees in the floodplain would be removed. This combined with Resolution 4432 would completely destroy the floodplain and all wildlife and more. On President's Day 2024, a large flock of Canadian geese were walking on Pearl Street when they were struck by a speeding car. Two Canadian geese were mortally wounded. I called the Franklin County sheriff's office and a deputy came and helped me load a dying Canadian goose into my truck, took it to the uh, local veterinarian and the Canadian goose was humanely euthanized. The Franklin County deputy remained at the site and took care of the other goose's, Canadian goose's body. Two points here. The Canadian goose that were on the street, they were there because the floodplain has been disrupted. They have nowhere to go. This is a violation of the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. The other point is I was grateful for the Franklin County deputy's help and mostly his kindness. Contrast this deputy's help with the, and kindness with the Benton County Sheriff's Office deputies killing of the family pets, Macy and Diesel. On a recap, on 4119 at the Pasco City Council meeting, I asked Pasco City Council Attorney Lee Kerr if animal control had due process protections of notice and hearing, and if those would be included in the dangerous animal ordinances. He said no, and he spoke for every city attorney for Kenwick, Pasco, and Richland. I do not know if due process language and training would stop future deputies from using assault rifles on our pet dogs beloved pets like Macy and Diesel, or would it stop them uh, from laughing and thinking it's funny when they kill, when they kill the dogs? But using due process might slow them down. My comments on 3-18-24 and tonight are for the record and to put the city of Pasco on notice. And please do not delete my comments as you did on 4 one nineteen five years ago today with my conversation with city attorney Lee Kerr. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any additional public comment?
<coughs> Dave Cortinas, uh, 411 West Clark. <coughs> Mayor, your instructions is not to talk to one person on the council, so I, I won't. I will respect that. But it's hard for me to not address uh, your vote against the Hispanic business owners downtown Pasco. It's hard for me to accept. I know you, I like you, I supported you, and that vote really brought sour grapes to, to me. I just don't understand how you could vote against helping these small business owners. They're, most of them are closed down right now. They're still not done with the construction. They don't open to plan to open until April 26th. They're all losing money, and we still got a no vote from Peter Serrano. I, I'm flabbergasted by that vote. And, uh, but, you know, they're going to continue the process it's on the roll. We're hoping that they all qualify for the $370,000 that the rest of the council members voted for. And I hope that uh, when we come back and after this, these first few dollars are asked, and given to, I hope that we are going to be able to ask for more because these people are losing even more money. And we are in support of them. We meet weekly with them, with the city, with the city administration showing up and the council members. And we appreciate all the support that the, the city of Pasco has given these small business owners. And I know they appreciate it. And, uh, and you know, they, they're losing money. You know, the tire company, they would be selling $6,000 a day in tires and rims because it's their busiest time of the year. They're closed. You know, and we understand the construction company's doing the best they can. But to get a no vote from the mayor of the city of Pasco against Hispanic business owners, it was just really, you know, puts a, a sore in, in the eyes of, of many people in the community. And I, I hope that maybe someday you can go back and bring that vote back and say, hey, the next time, I'm, I'm all for you guys. But uh, they, they, I know they appreciate the support and all the things that they're trying to do. They put in more hours. They're working another extra day to get it done. They're moving the best they can, the, uh, as fast as they can. But these businesses are still suffering. And, uh, and I want that to make very clear, that these businesses are suffering. They're hurting. And, uh, and, and I know that they uh, uh, want to... Uh, do the best they can, but they're they're having a tough time right now, and uh, so I just hope that uh, we have some passion towards these uh, business owner and and uh, and continue trying to support them the best you can. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Do we have any additional public comment tonight? Uh, I see a hand, but someone's standing, so maybe the hand first, and then you, yeah. second gentleman in the jacket. Uh, my name is Jose Cuevas, and I own the business in the corner of First and Lewis, where they started construction, removing the the um, the concrete on the sidewalks and the, and the roads. And I just want to let it be known that there is damages happening inside that building. My um, drywall on the ceilings is cracking, and also I noticed one of the walls having some damage. I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I'm not used to speaking in public, but take your time. It's okay. But um, I just want to make a point of that. I did take some pictures, send them out to the um, to the um, person they told me to send it to, but I got an answer, and it said that the case was closed or something like that. I I don't know if he got to the right person or or how that happened. I, I do see the uh, city clerk shaking her head, so it sounds like there may be some miscommunication here. Yes, um, thank you. I did receive that, and I sent you another email back along with a claim for damages form that I need you to fill out and submit back, and then we can go from there. Oh, okay. okay. I'll look thank for that. you. Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. It's okay. All right. That's why we're here. Thank you. Oh, all right. Uh, can you state the business just so we... The business is uh, Salon Fiesta, LLC. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, sounds like city clerk's on top of that, and uh, I guess if you need assistance filling that out, uh, okay. sounds like they're happy to help. All right, so. thank you. No, thank you. Um, I will note that Mr. Grimm sent me a message stating that he is now on. Um, 
You can come up while we try to sort this out, sir. Any luck, Jesse? Let's sit tight one second while we try to. Okay. I, don't, I don't want him talking and you talking over each other. So it's he has dialed in, but it's not allowing him to be made a panelist. Okay. So I'm not sure of his actual communication ability. He can probably listen, but not speak. Okay, well, beauty of technology. Go ahead, sir. Uh, you actually turn it off. I turn it off. There we go. My name is Edward Lee. I'm with Pasco, um, Residence in Pasco, Washington. I'm here representing Hello Habanero. Uh, we are a full service digital marketing agency established right now in Kennewick. We have full intent to move to Pasco and become the first digital marketing agency in Pasco. Primarily, most of our clients are Spanish speaking. We primarily serve Latino minority owned businesses. Um, I became aware with my my team about the struggle of the downtown businesses and we started putting a proposal together, uh, a plan, uh, before we even became aware of funding. Um, I actually have it printed. I don't know if I can give it to you. How many copies do you have? Uh, I just, think I have 10. Um, yeah, just hand them to the clerk. What she'll do, she'll put enter one or several on the record and then the four of us, I guess, will take the physical copies. So I came last week, I wasn't coming here to request funding, I was just coming here to establish the fact that I really want to do something for the downtown businesses. Um, we came up with a plan and what we started to do is we started to secure funding, um, not through the city of Pasco or not through any public means. We thought of coming up with something where it's, the business could get sponsored. Um, if you actually go to page six is where the proposal actually starts. Um, we, I started having conversations even with chambers. Can we do a grant opening for these businesses to kind of create some buzz when it does open and start to get their business kind of on, on the roll? Um, and then the other thing we started uh, kind of brainstorming is uh, we started like, okay, so a lot of these businesses don't have stories. Uh, my mom actually owned a business in downtown Pasco. I'm really familiar with the area and I know what this means for a lot of these business owners, especially if they've been established there for 10, 20, even more. Um, being able to tell their stories and also capture kind of, and then make this experience of them actually going through this build of the bridge actually be a positive experience in the end. Uh, can we do that for them? Um, I, th I really think it's going to take the community. Hello Habanero wants to help. Um, again, uh, with looking at the proposal, we were looking at what can we sponsor, what can other people sponsor. We actually talked to a financial institution. I cannot disclose who it is who actually was willing to cover up to $10,000 of this project. Um, and then the other portion was just Hello Habanero and also partly. Um, right now, as far as the proposal goes, I mean, we're short. If you look at page, uh, page eight, just the social media, that's the only portion of it that we remain unfunded for. Um, and this, again, was all be before we even became aware that there was funding through the city. Um, now, I did talk to a few people over the uh, the marketing department in the city of Pasco, kind of what they were doing. I mean, I became aware that they were focused on primarily on print, uh, radio, maybe newspaper, uh, and our specialty is a little different than that. And then uh, is the conversation can be had of, can we collaborate? What could that look like? I mean, we're good at some things, and the city of Pasco has a marketing department. I've seen the kind of work that your team has done, and uh, uh, again, uh, we have the common mission, and the common mission is, can we help these businesses? Uh, I can see my mom and a lot of these business owners, and I really want to see it succeed, and they can see the next day. Um, so uh, from what I became understood, I won't have enough time to kind of discuss every nitty-gritty detail of what we can offer. Uh, I don't know if I can request additional time for uh, uh, different presentations. No, and I'll be honest, I, I think we probably exceeded the scope of public comment by kind of going over a marketing pitch, if you will. I apologize. I, I, right. I mean, I, I'm not really sure. I don't believe the code really allows this. I, be really appropriate for uh, a workshop meeting. Nonetheless, we have these materials, and it's something that we can discuss with our team as we've worked on funding. Okay. So I, I we do appreciate it, and I, I think there's a, a lot of value in reviewing these. Um, okay. And again, I think uh, the city manager will get a copy from the clerk, and oh, apparently he's already got one from the clerk, and um, I'll, I'll have him reach out. But I, I think to go too much further, we really start veering out of the purpose of public comment. Absolutely. So proceeding to help downtown businesses, can, I, can Hello Habanar just proceed and just contact them directly? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say there's there's nothing stopping you from reaching out right. to uh, the downtown businesses on behalf of Hello Habanero. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. No, thank you. Thank you for coming down. appreciate the proposal. It's, it's helpful to see, you know, where we can maybe pick up some extra bandwidth. Absolutely. No, thank, thank you.
Thank you very much. Um, do we have any additional public comment tonight? Going once. Go ahead. My name is Alberto Mariquin. I'm the owner of Tires for Less and Tire One here in Pasco, on the east side of Pasco. I don't know if this is the, the, the right time to speak or not, but this is my first time here. And um, just a little frustrated with all this construction that's going on. Whoever did the design of this project, I don't think he thought it through how much it would affect a lot of us around the area that own businesses. Um, I opened a new shop about a year ago in the east side of Pasco. I have been in business since 2011, but I opened up a, uh, a new one right by the bridge. And it's been a year already since the one of the, the streets um, that I built my shop on was cl completely c closed. I've been surviving on that business because I've been putting out money from my other business to support this one. My, my thing is, is I wasn't aware that you could actually come to the, uh, any meetings and stuff like that and make complaints and stuff like that. I, I just thought that it was something that you could, you have to, you know, pretty much wait it out. Obviously we're all here trying to see if there's any way that we could get some help because some of us are getting ready to close or some people are actually closed because they're not able to survive with with this so that being said what we're trying to we're, what we're trying to do and i think all of us the more that we hear or or actually there's there's no one out there telling to some of but some of some of us business owners that there there's actually um ways that we could come to the city councils and find out what's going on because a lot of us i didn't even know what the hell was going on so that being said all i wanted to say is just like we're getting to the point where a lot of us are getting ready to close you know um and if we don't even know when this project is literally going to be um or the you know the, like the the bridge is going to be open you know it, it, they keep changing the dates they keep changing the plans so we really need your guys' help. That's all I need to say. And, and just so you're aware, over the past month or so, we've had conversations that have been running, and there's a pro, uh, project grant funding that's available. Uh, we still have a couple of steps that would have to make that finally, like finalized uh, to fund, as Mr. Cortina said, up to $370,000. There will be qualification requirements. Um, Adam, who do you want him to reach out to? for information on the project. I'll, I'll, I'll give him my card. You can. Okay. That's the city manager, and he's he and his team are overseeing that. So obviously if there are other folks impacted by this that are in your direct vicinity, make them aware. Um, but there's still several process, steps in that process. We have to have a special meeting and a couple other meetings. Okay. But the city is, is work. We're very keenly aware of your issues, and... Um, as Mr. Cortina has kindly said, we voted six to one with my dissent um, on funding that. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. I, thank you. Um, do we have any additional public comments? Yes, ma'am. Oh. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Is this on? It's on. Oh, it's off. It's on. Okay, there we go. There we go. So my name is Valerie. I reside in Pasco, Washington. I'm sure I'm familiar with most of you. I just came up here to add on to the additional comments that have been made. I think there is a little bit of um, gap in communication, especially with the other side of Oregon Street. And if there maybe could be a little bit more communication from the part of the city to kind of maybe come up with a map of who is in these directly impacted areas to help everybody get on the same page so that nobody is falling through the cracks. Since there is no direct guidelines, it is kind of hard for people to know, hey, am I impacted in this, am I not? Who do I talk to, who do I not talk to? 
And it's hard because a lot of people do come to me, but I don't have that contact to be like, hey, this is who's going to help you. I have gotten a little bit more information from Maria Peña and she's been very helpful, which I did give that information to a few people. But maybe if we were able to finally get some type of map situation to show, hey, these are the directly impacted areas, it would help the general public and it would also help with the fact that we don't want this to become a money grab situation. We want people who are directly impacted to be able to do something like this and something on behalf of the city to show directly impacted areas would totally solve that problem. I know that that's been in the works and if that was to get done sooner, that could possibly help the side of Oregon Street and our side to get that water cleared and get everybody on the same page because there is a lot of businesses, well, at least a few on Oregon Street. Um, I also wanted to take the time to thank a few of the council members for appearing to our meetings and taking the time to go downtown. We did have Adam Lincoln come down and a few of the council board members. It really makes a difference to feel like we're being seen and heard when people come and, and walk our area. They really do see, hey, there is no sidewalks or where do I park? I'm like, oh, I know, sorry. It's kind of, you know, got to park two blocks down. So I think it makes a big difference for the city to have been making their presence known. We appreciate it. Everybody on the... The business side, at least people who I talk to every day, appreciate it. And I think it makes all the difference um, that things are moving. It's not moving as fast as we wish, and we're trying to be patient and understand that it's a whole process. But we definitely are um, thankful things are getting going and um, hoping that things will speed up, especially with like a map like I had mentioned before. I think that'll make all the difference for everybody. Thank you. Thank you for your time. <clears throat> Do we have any additional public comment? Hello, my name is Wendy and I am a business owner in downtown Pasco. Uh, my business is Dark Angel Performance. I'm on 104 South Tacoma Street. Um, the reason that I'm here today is because my business, like she just mentioned, was one of the businesses that was falling through the cracks. Um, obviously, I can see all of the construction that is going on. Unfortunately, Right now, the main road that goes into my business is completely shut down. I did speak, I did make two phone calls today. Only one person got back to me and he was very, very helpful. He gave me a lot of information, which is, I'm very grateful for that. Um, and one of the things that he mentioned was that the city of Pasco was going to be helping this, possibly helping these businesses with advertising and possibly sharing these businesses information on your guys' social media. Um, I really, I went into your guys' um, city of Pasco Facebook. I really didn't see very much advertising for any of these businesses in downtown Pasco. I mean, if you guys, the gentleman that came up here, obviously trying to, um, get in with you guys to be able to help these businesses in downtown Pasco and help with advertising. I think that would be a great idea, especially for all of these small businesses. We are mainly Hispanics down here and we really feel like we are being left out. My husband didn't come today because he was very livid today with one of your guys, one of the construction workers out there. And that's why I came by myself. Um, we are being very patient like all of these people have mentioned and we just have one year in business we literally just have one year in business and we're really close to possibly closing because a lot of our customers say hey we can't get back there a lot of our customers have trailers when they bring their vehicles to us their can ams they can't do u-turns back there on tacoma street like how are we supposed to survive when our customers tell me i can't bring my vehicle to you and it's broken down as a business owner it is frustrating and i do ask that you guys take more consideration into this situation thank you for your time thank you for your comments um second call for public comments and our third and final call for public comments. Seeing no additional public comment, we will move on to item number seven. <coughs> That's reports from committee, commit, committees or officers. Uh, so we have rever rever verbal reports from council members. Um, uh, council member Barajas, do you have anything to report? I absolutely do. Um, 
have been a report that I attended the uh, Tri Cities Hispanic Chamber of Commerce uh, Awards dinner on Friday. Congratulations to all the winners uh, for your service and commitment to uh, PASCO. Great event. Um, and I know I'm missing one other that I attended Coffee with a Cup. A couple other council members were there as well. A great event attended. The room was packed. Um, people started kept coming in, but it was a packed room. So congratulations to uh, Pasco PD for putting yet another awesome event for the community. And there was great, great response from the community and the neighboring businesses. Uh, that's all I have to share. Thank you, Council Member Barajas. Uh, Mr. Harpster, do you have anything to uh, any comment? I do not this evening. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And Mr. Grimm, I know you said you're here. Um, I don't know if you can hear, speak, what have you. Well, if you're quiet, that's presumably because we can't hear you, not because you're not talking. <laughs> um, so with that, we'll move on to Mr. Perales. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to give a brief update. I attended the Lewis Street overpass construction update meetings, um, attending those regularly. Um, if you guys have been down there, they've paved a lot of those uh, areas now. So there's been access to parking now and, and it looks like we're kind of turning the page on that and hopefully um, things will start opening up here real soon. And then I also attended the Easter egg hunt put on by the Parks and Rec Department. Very good turnout, um, hundreds, maybe thousand, well over a thousand people probably showed up. It was very, very well attended, very well done. And, and I know my kids had a good time. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Prowls. Seeing no further comments. Oh, let me see. Uh, sorry, Mr. Grimm just Mr. Grimm just texted that he cannot uh, be heard, but he can't hear. So he's following along uh, happily. Um, with that, I, I have no uh, reports. So with that, we'll move on to item number eight, which is hearings and council action on ordinances and resolutions relating thereto. <laughs> item eight A is a public hearing and ordinance. Number 4710, right-of-way vacation at Pasco School District, number one, Orion High School, and that's uh, item VAC 2023-003. Mr. Gonzalez. Uh, <clears throat> good evening, Council. On March 4th, uh, Council uh, passed resolution number 4431, setting tonight, April 1st, as the date for a public hearing to consider a vacation uh, for a right-of-way request uh, for the Pasco School District's Career and College Academy High School. Uh, the high school will be located at the northeast corner of North Utah Avenue and East Salt Lake Street. Um, it'll be known as the Orion Career and College Academy High School. It'll serve approximately um, 600 students in grades 9 through 12 and uh, is intended to provide career and technical education for students. The high school itself was subject of a public hearing for a, a special permit um, with the Pasco Hearing Examiner, which it received approval for. Uh, chapter 12 of the Pasco Municipal Code establishes the procedures and the criteria uh, for consideration and determination of the vacation of streets, alleys, and access easements related to travel and transportation purposes. Um, the applicant is requesting a vacation of a portion of the East Salt Lake Street abutting the project site as shown uh, on the map uh, and as Exhibit A in the agenda report. Staff has evaluated uh, the uh, request and recommends that it is in the best interest of the city to move forward with the proposed vacation in accordance with the criteria of Pasco Municipal Code 12.40 and attached for your uh, review is an ordinance as well. With that, that concludes this presentation and happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Do we have any comments? Mr. Browse. What, the only question I had was, do, we don't have any utilities on that side of the road that are adjacent to that property that would be in the vacation? Uh, any utilities that were subject, uh, uh, that are subject to being moved would be located, would be relocated um, by the developer, in this case, the school district to serve the property or make sure that any removal, removal of them does not interfere with neighboring services as well. Okay. You, so you don't foresee us having you don't think maybe a road widening or anything of any sort in the future for that area? No, not at this location. Yeah. Oh, do we have any questions or comments from anyone out there? Uh, Mr. Harps or Ms. Rojas? None for me. Thank you. Thank you. None for me. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Melanie, can we get a motion? Actually, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm yeah. sorry. But yeah, we actually have to have a public hearing. Oh, yep. Oh, my bad. That's okay. 
Um, so at this point, we need to open the, the public hearing. Uh, is there a particular script you need or anything? No, we're just kidding. We're wrapped yep. <laughs> so with that, we're opening our public hearing on this item. Do we have any public comments on this item? I'll give it a second call. Do we have any comments on this particular item? I will give it a third call. Do we have any comments on this particular item? Hearing and seeing none, I will close the public hearing. And now I will kick it to Mr. Milney. Thank you, Mayor. I move to adopt ordinance number 4710, vacating a portion of East Salt Lake Street right of way in blocks 20 and 21 a phrase addition to Pasco, Washington, and waiving the requirements of an appraisal, title report, and payment of compensation, and further authorized publication by summary only. Second. All right, I get a motion. Second. Oh, uh, we'll go with Miss Blaisdell on this one, and and Miss Clerk, since we have so many members uh, out in the ether, let's go ahead and do a roll call vote. And since there are only two items of action in this section, one in this section, one in the following, let's just do roll call for these two items. Sounds great, Mayor. Thank you. All right. Uh, Councilmember Blaisdell. Yes. I will not do grim. Uh, Councilmember Harpster. Yes. Councilmember Perales. No. Councilmember Barajas. Yes. Councilmember Mil or Mayor Portem Milney. Yes. And Mayor Serrano. Yes. And it passes uh, five, five to one. Thank you, Ms. Clerk. And with that, we will move on to item number nine, ordinances and resolutions not relating to hearings. We got resolution number 4440, setting a public hearing for the dissolution of the Downtown Pasco Development Authority. I see Ms. Sigdell pinged. I know she's not here. She, I believe she's present I electronically. She online. Deputy City Manager Sigdell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can you hear me? I can. Um, so this uh, item is to set the hearing, uh, the public hearing that is required uh, for the dissolution of DPDA. So at this point, um, there is not much to report other than the fact that we're, we're setting a date for the public to be involved uh, in the discussion of the matter. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, with that, do we have any questions or comments from Council? Hearing none, can we get a motion? Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve resolution number 4440, fixing a date and place for public hearing on the dissolution of the Downtown Pasco Development Authority and directing that the notice thereof be given in a manner required by law and the charter. You got a motion? Second. Uh, it sounds like Mr. Harpster, was that you? Second? Yes. Okay. Uh, I got a motion a second again because of the, the distance issue. Let's go ahead and roll call it. Councilmember Harpster? Councilmember Harpster? Yes. Councilmember Perales? Yes. Councilmember Barajas? Yes. Councilmember Blaisdell? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Milne? Yes. And Mayor Serrano? Yes. And it passes unanimously. All righty. Thank you. Uh, item number 10 is unfinished business. I see none there. <clears throat> um, not Item number 11 is new business. There is none there. And item number 12 is miscellaneous discussion. City Manager Lincoln. I think we have we have a couple of pictures of the, the construction progress that's that's being made downtown for, for those that are interested. Um, you can see the paving has, has gone in. The next slide, please. Same here. Um, and then if you go to the next slide, uh, staffer, uh, the brief update is that we're working on the, the guidelines that were mentioned earlier. Um, and, and it will put together what the assistance for the application filling out looks like. And then um, the next steps will be the April 30th Planning Commission special meeting and May 1st uh, special city, city council meeting for uh, approval of the funds. So um, the, the map is also something that's currently being worked on. So just wanted to provide that update. And then, um, if there's no questions on that, uh, it, Mr. Rice, is this available on the website, or what, what's the best way for the public to access this? Because this directly answers your question of kind of what's forthcoming. We can, and we can put the, the update on the dates. website. What's sure. that? We can put the update on the website. Yeah, that'd be great. Absolutely. And even if it's just a hyperlink and the PowerPoint from there. 
That way it's not taking huge real estate or anything, but available. Oh, and Facebook as well, I would suggest. You got it. All right. Uh, Ms. Ling, go ahead with uh, anything else you have. Mr. Rice. Uh, good evening, Council. Yes, I just wanted to uh, review what uh, Councilman Perales mentioned about our spring extravaganza this weekend, which was uh, led in a partnership with God's New Generation, as well as a couple other sponsors, AA Plumbing and Renewal by Anderson and Clearwater Collision, which provided the opportunity for the community to come out and uh, Easter egg hunt various age groups, including an ADI access site. Um, we don't have the total numbers of attendance uh, just yet. I hope to share that, but I can tell you that uh, 35,000 Easter eggs were uh, distributed that weekend and collected by uh, kids. In um, addition, they had uh, several door prizes, scooters, bicycles, um, all sorts of Easter baskets and things like that. So it was a great turnout, great weekend. Uh, Easter a little early this year, but the weather was awesome for that. So we appreciate all our uh, partnerships and sponsors in that and look forward to continuing providing additional opportunities as the year winds up. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Well, hopefully my kids weren't listening to that because they missed out. Um, I, I see Mr. Pross. Yeah, I'll be brief. Um, I know we had a we had a conversation last week about providing funds for the, uh, the series of upgrades for the 911 system. So I just I know I'm not looking for any motion today, but I, I would like a small presentation about our role in that process and a roadmap going forward. I, I read two um, very good articles in the Tracy Herald about the various upgrades that are gonna be needed and uh, essentially who's gonna be funding them. And so, you know, I got a couple phone calls about it this weekend, you know, where have you guys been at? Again, the, the articles were very well done. Obviously COVID was an issue, um, but this is, I mean, like that article said, every second counts and and I don't I don't want us to be addressed in a very negative manner because we're not essentially putting this in the forefront. And so I would just like to see our roadmap going forward, um, where funds are going to come from, where we're falling short. The, all those articles also talked about perhaps a 911 sales tax. Um, I think as a body, we need to start thinking about that. Are we in support of that? Do we need to support our friend county commissioners to do that, to shore up, um, you know, that system? Because it looks like it is on the brink of failure. Um, so I just wanted to kind of bring that to the attention of, of this body. And, and I think we need to have all the information that we can and also just, just know that we, that, you know, we have a roadmap that we're going to be following and uh, maybe in, in the, this is a budget year. And so put in re, you know, reprioritizing some of those things in our budget, maybe something we need to do. So that's it. Thank you. If it's okay, Mayor, just to provide some context there. So there's um, a couple of board meetings that happen every month that myself and um, chief Roski and, um, Chief Crowley all attend to provide um, updates and feedback to that particular group. Um, we're well aware of the funding. We've been, the whole city has been in support and it was on the legislative um, agenda to support the um, congressional direct spending and, and legislative ask for, for that body. Um, and we'll be happy to provide a, a more detailed uh, report for council on where that's at. Thank you, Mr. Lincoln. Um, either Ms. Bross or Mr. Arps, or do you have any, um, <clears throat> Additional comment during this miscellaneous section. No, I have nothing this evening. Thank you. And Thank you. none for me. Thank you. With that, I will move forward to executive session. We do have need for that, and this will be uh, potential litigation. Is that correct? Which would be revised code of Washington section forty-two point three zero point one one zero subsection one. Uh, subsection I, Roman numeral two or two or three? Uh, I, 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 uh, triple I. Um, it, it, potential litigation and with me, the city attorney and the city manager, that it? And for how long? 15 for 15 minutes. Deputy so city manager now, will be online. What's that? The deputy city manager will be online. Okay, and the deputy city manager, uh, remotely attending. It is now 7.51. Uh, we shall return at 8.06. Thank you.
It is now 8.06 and this meeting is adjourned. Thank you for joining us.